Hello everyone, I'm Alfred, and welcome back to the 36 Lessons of Vivek. I might be able to finish these all in one go. There aren't going to be any interruptions since my cats are eating lunch. So, last time we left off with Sermon 28. You'll bring me good then fortune. Vivek left Set to look after the Domehead you Demon and went back to the space that was not a space. From the provisional house, he looked into the middle world to find the fifth monster called the Ruddy Man. When the Druz ruled the world, the Daedroth Prince Molag Ball had been their chief. He took a different shape then, spiny, armored, and made for the sea. Vivek, in giving birth to the many spawns of his marriage, had dropped an old image of Molag Ball into the world, a dead carapace of memory. It would have not been a monster if a Velothi child had not wanted to impress his marriage by wearing it. The ruddy man of the eight monsters was the least complicated. He made those who wore him into mighty killers and nothing more. He existed in the physical. Only geography makes him special. When Vivek found him near the boy's village and on Nisus, there was a violent clash of arms and an upheaval of the earth. Their battle created the West Gash. Wanderers that go there hear still the sounds of it. Swords across the cust, crust, the grunt of God, the snapping of his monster child's splintered legs. After his victory, Vivek took the shell of the ruddy man to the depth to the Druz that had modified his mother. The queen of Druz, whose name is not easy to spell, was in a period of self-incubation. Her wardens took the gift from Vivek and promised to guard it from the surface world. This is the first account of Druz being liars. In ten years, the ruddy man appeared again, this time near Tyr, worn by a wayward shaman who followed the House of Troubles. Instead of guarding it, the Druz had imbued the living armor with mythic inflexibility. It molted soon after skill draping the shaman and stretched his bones to the five corners. When Vivek met the monster in battle again, he saw the remains of three villages dripping from its feet. He took on his giant form and slew the ruddy man by way of the symbolic college. Since he no longer trusted the Ultimer of the sea, Vivek gave the carapace of the monster to the Vout and local mystics of the number room. He told them, you must, you may make of the ruddy man a philosopher's armor. The mystics began by wrapping one of their sages in the shells, a series of flourishes by two supernumerates one hormonally tall and the other just under his arms. They ran around the carapace and threw each other, applying holy resin drawn from the carcasses of the now useless numbers between 12 and 13. Golden straws were quickly stuck through the mythic epidermal so the sage could breathe. After the ceremonial etchings were drawn into the hardening resin, long lists of dead names and equations whose solutions were to be found in the mouth of the chimer inside, there came the illuminations, inscribed by the bright, terrible fingernail of Vec. From the nail's tip flowed a searing liquid, filling the grooves of the ceremonial etchings. They bled out to form veined patterns about the sage shell that theologians would decipher forever after. The ending of the words is Om Sivi. This one is luckily very straightforward, in much the same way that the Ruddy Man is a very straightforward monster to fight. Um, so the cell has taken the dome-headed demon from last time away, and the only thing that Vivek needs to do is just keep killing. Um, this mentions here that Druz used to rule the world. I had mentioned this a few times in the past, but really hadn't had much of a chance to talk about it. Um, and Molag Ball was essentially their king. And Molag Ball reflected those who worshipped and or feared him. He looks like a man or elf now because he's feared by them, but Druz used to be the predominant race on the earth. And so he looked like them. Vivek had made, essentially remade an old image of Molag Ball and made it separate from the current image of Molag Ball. Um, just an echo of him, essentially. A dead carapace of memory, as it says in the text. Um, the thing is, it was just the old shell. Drows naturally have a form of chitin around their body, like many of the creatures in Morrowind. And it wouldn't have been a problem, except somebody took the chitin and put it on as you would any other piece of chitin. Um, the spirit of the ruddy man within, however, took over and ruled the person in question. Um, I meant to mention this before, but anon is just a word that means a thing that will be named this soon. So earlier they mention... I am Anon Amalexia. The Velothi, and on Chimer, and on Dunmer, stuff like that. So I am will soon be renamed Almalexia. The Velothi are the original name of the Chimer. 
The Chimer then became the Dunmer. Um, but yeah, the Ruddy Man was the least complicated. He made those who wore him into Mighty Killers and nothing more. He's just a super-powered set of armor. Um, Vivek gave the... Once Vivek killed uh, the Ruddy Man, he gave the armor back to the Druz because he kind of owed them after they had modified his mother. However, they said that they would hold it specially and take care of it. They lied. They just gave it to somebody else. When Vivek killed the Ruddy Man a second time and took it back a second time, he instead gave it to his own people and they equipped somebody in the gear and made it even tougher -er. Um This one is very confusing. All right. Sermon 29. The scripture of the numbers. 1. The dragon break or the tower. 1. 2. The Enantiomorph, 68. 3. The Invisible Gate, Alm Civi, 122. 4. The Corners of the House of Troubles, 242. 5. The Corners of the World, 100. 6. The Walking Ways, 266. 7. The Sword at the Center, 39. 8. The Wheel or the Eight Givers, 484. 9. The Missing, 11. 10, the Tribes of the Altmer, 140. 11, the Number of the Master, 102. 12, the Heavens, 379. 13, the Serpent, 636. 14, the King's Cough, 32. 15, the Redeeming Voice, 110. 16, the Acceptable Blasphemes, 12. 17, the Hurling Disc, 283. 18, the Egg or Six Times the Wise. 19, the Provisional House, 258. 20, the Lunar Lattice, 425. 21, the Womb, 13. 22, Unknown, 453. 23, the Hollow Prophet, 54. 24, the Star Wound, 44. 25, the Emperor, 239. 26, the Rogue Plane, 81. 27, the Secret Fire, 120. Yes. 28, the Drowned Lamp, 8. 29, the Captive Sage, 212. 30, the Scarab, 10. 31, the Listening Frame, 473. 32, the False Call, 7. 33, the Anticipations, 234. 34, the Lawless Grammar, 2. 35, the Prison Shirt, 191. 36 the hours 364 the presence of a deaf witness is what the numbers are they hang on to the orbis as the last nostalgia of their godhood the effigies of numbers are the current applications this is folly as above to be affixed to a certain to a symbol too too certain the ending of the words is alms let me find out what the deal of, with sermon 29 is um, if I remember correctly it's a code. There are 36 numbers here. Um, presumably related to the 36 lessons of Vivek, although it is very difficult to read them because I have rather Uh, I'm a little dysgraphic, I believe. Right, here we go. If you associate each of the 35 listed numbers with a word in its sermon, a hidden message is revealed. So, the scripture of the numbers. One, the dragon break, or the tower, one. If we go back to the very, very beginning, the first letter of the first sermon is he. First number, rather. And then if we go to two... 
uh, to the enantiomorph 68. The 68th number, or the 68th word of the second lecture is was. Um, I'm not going to do this for every single one because holy moly, how exhausting. But if you number everything out, the words are, he was not born a god. His destiny did not lead him to this crime. He chose this path of his own free will. He stole the godhood and murdered the Hortator. Vivek wrote this. So this one is even more heavily coded than the others. But it is a full-on admittance that this is mostly a falsehood. Vivek first admits he was not born a god, and he was not destined to do this stuff. He chose the path of his own free will. He stole godhood. He murdered Nerevar. And then he says again, Vivek wrote this to clarify. Not only did Vivek write all of these books, but Vivek wrote this coded message. And what's more, Vivek wrote all of these. And it says Vivek wrote this, not Vivek did this. Again, implying Vivek might not have even thought about doing these things. The actual things described within are the dragon break. That's the first one. A dragon break is a fracture of time. Um, it's a place in lore where multiple things happen at once. It's the weird quantum uh, uncertainty that's in Elder Scrolls lore. So, for example... Daggerfall has multiple endings. The only game with a main quest with multiple endings. And Morrowind, they had a really hard time because they had to rationalize which ending was canon. And they ended up going for all of them. Now, the ending is who you give a specific item to. And there is only one item to give. And you cannot get duplicates of it. Um, you must throw your hat in the ring with somebody. The canon is that it leads to Talos being created. But this means that Talos might not just be the Emperor. The dragon break that occurred at the end of Dragonfall, Daggerfall, pardon me, Daggerfall means that Talos is Tiber Septum, the Emperor at the time, but he is also partially Manamarco, and Manamarco became his own god separately, among other things happening. Um. But yes, a dragon break is a is the quantum uncertainty built into lore. What's more, it also happened at the Battle of Red Mountain. Which is why we're not exactly sure who killed who and what happened, but Vivek here admits that he killed Hordator Noreverine. The Anatiomorph is just a name for Talos. The Invisible Gate is Almsivi. Again, they refer to Almsivi here. The corners of the House of Troubles, corners of the world, the walking ways, the sword of the center. These are all semi-random words that are relevant to all of the other um, passages. The wheel or the eight givers. Um, our base is referred to as the wheel sometimes, and the eight givers are the divines. The missing is the missing god, Lorcan. The tribes of the Ultima are the different pieces of myrrh that all split off to become different races. The number of the master, I don't understand. The heavens is a reference to birth sign. The serpent is a specific birth sign. The king's cough is the epitaph that Vivek uses for the thum, the shout. The redeeming force, I do not know. The acceptable blasphemes of the Dajic princes. The hurling disc is Arbus. Um, a disc flying through space is the universe, and again, it harkens back to the wheel. The egg or six times the wise is what Vivek has referred to a lot. The provisional house is the place Vivek has been staying on this little quest. The lunar lattice is um, the way that kaijit are made into different things. For those who don't know, there are bunch of different kinds of kaijit. Um, 
some of them are a little more buff. Some of them are a little more jaguar-like. Some look like more like house cats. Um, some are huge, almost like an orc. Uh, some are a little smaller and shrimpier. Um, but part of that is... But one of the things is that those are just the humanoid ones. Some of them are the size of house cats and walk on all fours. Some of them are the size of tigers and also walk on all fours. Kaijit are born in different types based on the patterns of the moon. They have a very strange crossover with how the moon works. And the lunar lattice is how the different Kaijits are born. This is partially why Kaijits look differently in every Elder Scrolls game. Because they are actually different subspecies of Kaijit within the main species, except it's not really a species. Those are all the same exact genetic species. The womb unknown in the Hollow Prophet, I do not understand, but they've been mentioned before. The star wound is the heart of Lorcan. The emperor is literally the emperor, Tiber Septum, or the person who is in power, who is a Uriel, I believe. The rogue plane is a plane of oblivion. The secret fire is possibly a reference to Lord of the Rings. The drowned lamp is something mentioned earlier. The captive sage, I do not know. I do not know any of these, actually, until we get to 33, the anticipations. The lawless grammar is a reference to how um, words have power. I don't understand the prison shirt or the hours. So yes, this one is very strange and confusing, but that's okay. Sermon 30. Then Vivek left the mystics of the number room and went back to the space that was not a space. From the provisional house, he looked into the middle world to find the sixth monster called City Face. He was vexed when he could not find it and went back to the morning hold in secret anger, killing a mystic that asked about higher order. Nerevar the Hortator witnessed this and said, Why do this, my lord? The mystics look to you for guidance. They work to make your temple better stoned. Vivek said, Nobody knows who I am. The Hortator nodded and went back to his studies. Here is how City Face had hid from his mother, Hyphen Father. It had been born as Ha Note, a bare urge of power, an esoteric wind nerve tuned to the frequency of huddled masses. It found root in villages and multiplied, finding in the minds of the settled a veiled astrology, the star charts of culture, and this resonance made its head swim. Ha Note moved sideways into the adjacent place growing and unbeknownst. Above the vocal, it trembled with new emotions, immortal ones, absorbing more than the 30 to know, known to exist in the no middle world. When Han Note became gravely homesick, the grabbers took it. A grabber said, new emotions to the lonely only occur of madness. This thing is gone. It is ours now. Grabbers had never made a city of their own, and their glimpse of Vivex, which shone with holiness through the spheres, had taken their attention. Under this reason did the issue of Vex slide into our realm, drawn by our coveting hidden loss. We shall build our tower hope upon its face. Now many years had passed in Resdania, and the high priest of the Dwemer were building something alike as Vivek, and alike as the new Hano to the Grabbers. The Hortator was engaged with an army of theirs that had become too brave, talking foolish words, and Nerevar helped destroy them with the help of the orphan legion of Iam. When he went to give trophy to Vivek, he saw his lord under attack by the city face. The monster was saying this. Here we are to replace your city, Vec and Vec. We are from the place of the more than known emotions, and our citizenry has died from it. Two things we came for, but we can stay for only one. Either we ask you to correct our error of culture, or we'll merely take yours by dint of force. The second is easier, I think. Vivek sighed. You would replace my direction, he said. I am weary of this, though I wanted to kill you an age before. Resdania is fallen ill, and I have no time for one more imaginary analog of an unknown incident. Here, take this. At which point he touched the tower hope of the city face and corrected the error of the grabbers. And this. At which point he stabbed the heart of the city face with the ethos knife, which is to say, Urket ai ai aldun ai, the short blade of proper commerce. The ending of the words is Omsevi. Um, this monster is a, again, we can see that Vivek kind of switches back and forth. Vivek in this is a little more tired and depressed. And it may be because something happened between Sermon 28 and 29. In 29, he writes codes 
to allow him to admit to his crime of killing Nerevar and for choosing to steal divinity. Um, and in Sermon 30, he is depressed. Vivek murders somebody for no real reason, kind of just because he's upset and the priest is getting on his nerves. Nerevar sees this and is confused and asks why. Vivek only says, no one knows what I am. Nerevar in this goes along with Vivek being a sad boy who, you know, is not known by anyone. Um, this monster, as m I think I mentioned, is almost like a shared state of mind. It is a way of thinking. The Grabber Zora race only mentioned in uh, the Lessons of Vivek. They are a place from outside of reality. They don't exist in the real world, and they don't have a city. Um, they attempted to conquer Vivek by transforming it into their own and the creature, Ha Note, became City Face and essentially is the frame of mind of a city as a divine concept. Yes, very confusing as with everything else. Um, but yes, it mentions that Ha Note is tuned to the frequency of huddled masses. It found root in villages and multiplied, finding in the minds of the settled of veiled astrology. Of note, Vivek claims that there are 30 emotions as held by mortals, and that gods can have more emotions than the 30 that humans have. Well, mortals. The ethos knife is another name for keening, the dagger used by Kaganrak to focus and flay the power of the heart of Lorcan. Also mentioned here is that um, a number of years pass. Uh, the war with the Dwemer is mentioned, and what's more, they refer to Vec by his old name, Vec, not Vivek. His mortal name, Vec. Um... They refer to him as Vec and Vec. Vivek likes the letter V, which is why he decided to add another V to his name and be Vivek instead of just Vec. But yes. Sermon 31. Many more years passed in Resdania, and the high priests of the Dwemer were ready to make war on the rulers of Vetloth. The Hortator had become the husband of I am during this time, and the first saint of the Triune Way. The Vivek had tired of fighting his sons and daughter, and so took a respite of trying to find them. The Hortator said to his wife, Where is Vivek, my teacher? I love him still, though he grows cold. His lamentations, if I can call him that, have changed the skin of the whole country. He is hardly to be found anywhere in Veloth as of late. The people grow dark because of it. And Ion took mercy on her troubled husband, and told him the sword of the Triune had been fighting minor monsters stirred up by the Dwemer as they worked on their brass siege machines. She took the Hortator inside her, and showed him where his master was. Amsivi, or at least that aspect that chose to be Vivek, sat in the Lydney Hall of the False Thinking Temple after his battle with the flute and pipe ogres of the West Gash. He began writing again in his Book of Hours. He had to put on his water face first. That way he could separate the bronze of the old temple from the blue of the new and write with happiness. Second, he had to take another feather from the big moon, further rendering it dead. That way he could write about mortals with truth. Third, he recalled the pomegranate banquet when he was forced to marry Molag Ball with wet scriptures to cement his likeness as Mephala and write with black hands. He wrote, The last time I heard his voice showing the slightest signs of impatience, I learned to control myself and submit to the will of others. Afterwards, I dared to take on the secret fire and realized there was no equilibrium with the Ateda. They were liars, lost roots, and the most that I can do is be an interpreter into the rational. Even that fails the needs of the people. I sit on the mercy seat and pass judgment, the walking, the waking state, and the phase aspect of the innate urge. Only here can I doubt in this book, written in water, broadened to include evil. Then Vivek threw his ink on the passage to cover it up for the lay reader and wrote instead, Find me in the blackened paper, unarmored, in final scenery. 
Truth is like my husband, instructed to smash, filling with procedure and noise, hammering weighty, heaviness-made schematic, lessons learned only by a mace. Let those that hear me be buffeted, and let some die in the ash from the striking. Let those that find him, find him murdered by illumination, pummeled like a traitorous house. Because if an hour is golden, then immortal I am a secret code. I am the partaker of the doom drum, chosen of all of those that dwell in the middle world to wear this crown, which reverberates with truth, and I am the mangling messiah. The ending of the words is Omsibi. So, um, there are multiple explanations of why the Dunmer are gray when they used to be gold as the Chimer. Some say that it is an obvious epigenetic and genetic change. The ash of Red Mountain that buffets all of Morrowind would have changed their skin from gold or bronze to gray and blue. Um, some blame Azura as punishment for the murder of Nerevar. <clears throat> Pardon me, I've drunk some coffee today. And uh, it has shredded my throat. Um, in this, Vivek takes blame for it, saying that his depression and uh, isolation has changed the skin of the country. This is when Nerevar has married Amalexia. But again, they had been married before Amalexia even became a god. Yeah. Vivek has been running around fighting monsters made by the Dwemer while they're working on the big one, Numidia. Um, she took the Hortator inside her and showed him where his master was. Maybe a case of sex, but it may actually be <clears throat> um, Amalexia taking Nerevar's mind into hers so he can see using her divine eyes and see things that a mortal could not understand. Vivek changes himself uh, from his warrior form to a more peaceful form. He talks about how he had been raped by Molag Bal and made into Mafala and been given black hands. Uh, Mafala is referred to as she of the black hands sometimes. Etc. Etc. Um, and she is Vivek's anticipation as well. Nerevar has become the first uh, saint of the tribunal temple as well. Initially, uh, there was, I think, only one saint, Veloth, who founded it, more or less. Um, and they added a f because Veloth founded Resdania slash Veloth slash the home of the Chimer. Recall that the Chimer are called the Velothi initially. Um, so Saint Veloth is patron saint of the Dunmer because he created all of this, really. He's the, he's, he's their equivalent of like a Leif Erikson. He landed them there and got it done. St. Rilms, Olms, Delen, and a few of the others are seen as names of Canton in Vivek City and as shrines that one can pray to in the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. Um, we get a few more later added on. Uh, for example, St. Jube is added as a saint after the Elder Scrolls. Um, the tribunal names Nerevar a saint because if Nerevar is a saint, then he cannot be anything else within the, tri the tribunal temple, which means that he cannot be counted as a different divine state, which means that there cannot be an irreverie. When the false tribunal of Morrowind fell after Vivek and the other two lost their divinity after the events of Morrowind, the original tribunal of Boethia, Mithala, and Azora was reinstated. 
and the false tribunal was considered saints because yes they did change a lot in morrowind i don't think any of it ended up being for the better but they did change a lot um so vivek not worshipped as a god but is considered a saint um because no matter what happened vivek is now no longer a god and in fact is missing The traitorous house referred to is, of course, House Dagoth. The Doom Drum is Lorcan or his heart, because the um. Doom 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 that you hear in Nerevar Rising, the main theme song, that is actually the heartbeat of Lorcan. Um, it just makes that sound. Uh, so yes. They mentioned lessons learned only by a mace. A mace is a much more violent and less careful weapon than a sword used by people who don't really give a shit about the collateral damage. The next sermon is the scripture of the mace. Three sermon 32. Welcome, this is a scripture of the mace. First, the pleasure of of annihilation is the pleasure of disappearing into the unreal. All those that would challenge the sleeping world will seek membership in this movement. I denounce the alienation of the cloven duality with a hammer. Second, take from me the lessons as a punishment for being moral. To be made of dirt is to be treated as such by your jailers. This is the key and lock for the Daedra. Why do you think they escaped the compromise? Third, Velothi, your skin has become the pregnant darkness. My brooding has bought this on. Remember that Boethia asked you to become the color of bruise. How else to show your people, yourselves, people of the exodus into the vital pain? The sage who is not an anvil, a conventional sentence and nothing more. By which I mean dead, the fourth walking way. Fifth, a proper comprehension of the virtues, stage managed and to be murdered. Sixth, in the end rejoice as a hostage released from drumming torment. Something? but that savors his wound. The drum breaks you and you find it to be in a nest of hornets, which is to say your sleep is over. Seventh, the suspicious is spectacle, and a lie is only a theoretical inspiration. Eighth, but why, do you ask, do the Daedra wish to meddle with the Orbis? It is because they are the radical critique, essential as all mortals, martyrs. That some are more evil than others is not an illusion, or rather, it is a necessary illusion. This begins talking about the mace and more violence, but then segues into the Daedra and the natures of the universe. The pleasure of annihilation is the pleasure of disappearing into the unreal. Unmaking things is a primal urge, just as creating things is. And destroying things with a hammer or mace is a part of that. I denounce the alienation of the cloven duality with a hammer. Um, I believe this is Vivek saying, don't talk shit on those who want to hit things with a hammer. <laughs> um, take from me the lessons as a punishment for being here. to be made of dirt is to be treated as, your, as such by your jailers um, being mortal is a punishment but you should learn from it such as the lock and key of the Daedra why do you think they escaped the compromise the Aedra made a compromise to give up some of their power to make the world the Daedra did no such thing but are what do you think of our city, considered by most to be weaker than the Aedra because as they didn't make the world, they have no part in it and cannot change it. Um, and so the Daedra attempt to use people's mortality as a weapon against them. They want to convince them that they need Daedra. You'll bring me good fortune. Um, the Chimer are again referred to Velothias here because he's the saint who got them over to Morrowind. Your skin has become the pregnant darkness. This is a reference to how they've been turning blue and gray and purple. My brooding has brought this on. Remember that Boethia asked you to become the color of bruise. How else to show yourselves people of the exodus into the vital pain? Um, their skin turning gray is a mark and signifier that they have suffered and they should wear it like a badge of honor. 
the fourth walking way is mentioned here, and it is just being dead compared to the third, which is being a hero. And I've already forgotten the second and first. Um, the other things are either too confusing for me to manage or somewhat obvious as long as you're in the right mindset for the rest of these lessons. And then the last one. But then why do you ask? But then why, you ask? Do the Daedra wish to meddle with the Arbus? It's because they are the radical critique, essential as all monarchs. That some are more evil than others is not an illusion, what or it is a necessary illusion. Um, the Daedra exist as naysayers. They are people who did not have a part in making the world, and so must critique it. They must question it. Um, it is their nature. Believing that some Daedra are more trustworthy than others is either not the case or something that you should do even if it is not the case. It's mentioned that it is not an illusion or that it is a necessary illusion. Sermon 33. Then Vivek left the litany hall of the false thinking temple where he had brooded for so long, creating the scripture of the pounding light, and went back to the space that was not a space. From the provisional house, he looked into the middle world to find the seventh monster called Lai Rock. Lai Rock was born of Vivek's second aperture and was thrown out of the pomegranate banquet by a member of the Sweeps, another forgotten guild. The Sweep did not take it for the monster that it is, and so he did not expect it to fly from his hand into the heavens. I am born of golden wisdom and powers that should have forever been unalike. With this nature, I am invited into the hidden heaven. By which he meant the scaled blanket made well, of not stars whose number is 13. Lyrock became full of foolishness, haggling with a void ghost who hides in the religion of all men. The void ghost said, stay with me a full hundred years and I will give you a power no divinity will dare disobey. But before the hundred years was up, Vivek was already looking for Lyrock and found him. Stupid stone, he said. To hide in the scaled blanket is to make a mark on nothing. His bargains are only for ruling kings. So Vivek sent the Hortator into the heavens to shave Lyrock asunder with a named axe. Nervar made peace with the South Pole Star of Thieving and the North Pole Star of Warriors and the Third Pole Star, which existed only in the Aether, which was governed by the Apprentice of Magnus the Sun. Ahead, they gave him leave to wander among their charges and gave him red sight by which to find Lyrock in the Hidden Heavens. By chance, Nervar met the Void Ghost first, who told him that he was in the wrong place, to which the Hortador said, Me or you? The Void Ghost said both. The sermon does not tell what else was said between these masters. Lyrock, however, used the confusion to launch his own attack on the city god, Vivek. He was hastened by all three of the Black Guardians who wanted him swiftly gone. Though they meant no hostility to the Lord of the what Middle Air. What do you think of our city, Outlander? The citizenry of Vex screamed as they saw, saw a shooting star come out of the sky like a toll road of hell. But Vivek merely raised his hand and froze Lyrock just above the city, and then he pierced the monster with Muatra. Friend? The practice of piercing the second aperture is now forbidden. When Nerevar returned, he saw the frozen comet above his lord's city. He asked whether or not Vivek wanted it removed. Go ahead, stranger. I would have done so myself if I wanted, silly Hortator. I shall keep it there with its last intention intact, so that if the love of the people for the, really so that if the love of the people of the city for me ever disappear, so shall the power that holds back their destruction. Come on, then. Nerevar said, Love is your love is under your will only. Just don't keep me waiting. Vivek smiled and told the Hortator that he'd become a minister of truth. This is possibly my favorite of the sermons. It's about that big rock that sits over top of Vivek. The floating thing. It's properly called Bar Dao. Um, some say that it is an egg of the offspring of Vivek and Molag Ball. That is what this uses. Um, most claim that Sheogorath is the one who threw it. Um, but some say that Bardow is in fact 
malevolent and threw itself at the world of its own free will. Some call it a moonlet, which I think is very cute. A baby moon. The scaled blanket made of not stars, whose number is 13, is the 13th of the 12 constellations. There are meant to be only 13, 12 months and 12 birth signs, just as with the Earth zodiacs. But there's the secret 13th one, the serpent, which has its own things going on. The void ghost is the spirit of Lorcan, who hides in the religion of all men. Lorcan finds his way into pretty much everyone's religion. Vivek says that Lyrock was probably never going to get a true power from Lorcan because he only gives his things out to ruling kings. Here, Vivek claims that Lorcan wanted Vivek to have godlike power. Nerevar heads up into the heavens and uses that axe that was mentioned a little bit ago to hunt for Lyrock for Vivek. He teams up with the sign of the thief sign, the warrior sign, uh, and then another star to try to te to try to find Lord Rock, Lyrock rather. Sorry. Nerevar spends time talking to Lorcan, but it's unclear how long this goes on. And then yes. Uh, Vivek freezes Bardau in place above Vivek, but does not remove its intent. It's Is there something you need? not stopped in the sense that Vivek exerted enough force on it from the other way to make it just freeze in place. It is stopped in time, and if ever unfrozen, it would fall back to Earth with its intent. Uh, with its initial velocity. And then, as mentioned, Vivek claimed that their love is what keeps it in the air. And then he hollowed it out and turned it into a propaganda machine and named Nerevar the first Minister of Truth. The Ministry of Truth is... Um, naturally, a maximum security prison for religious criminals. Sermon 34. Vivek left the Ministry of Truth and went back to the space that was not a space. From the provisional house, he looked into the middle world to find the eighth and final and mightiest monster called Golga Mor Jill and more. What is this the wise must look elsewhere for the string Wealth of power. Beyond measure, Vivek called to his side the Hortator, and this was the first time Nerevar had ever been to the Provisional House. He had the same vision oh, Vivek had had so many years ago, that head. of the two-headed ruling king. Who is that, he wondered. Vivek yes. said the red jewel of conquest. Nerevar, perhaps because he was frightened, became vexed at his lord's You've answer. Why are you always so evasive? Vivek told the Hortator that to be otherwise was to betray his nature. Together they moved into the middle world, to a village near Vivek, near where Vivek had been found by I am and set. The eighth monster was there, but he did not act much like a monster. He sat with his legs in the ocean with a troubled look on his face. When he saw his mother hyphen father, he asked why he should have to die and return to oblivion. Vivek told the eighth monster that to be otherwise was to betray his nature. Since this did not seem to satisfy the monster, and Vivek still had a touch of I am's mercy, he said, The fire is mine, let it consume they, and make a secret door in the altar of Padme, in the house of Boataya, where we become safe and looked after. The monster accepted Muatra with a peaceful look, and his bones became the foundation for the city of the dead. And on Narciss. Nervar put away his axe, which he had at the ready, and frowned. 
Why, he said, did you ask me to come if you knew the eighth monster was given so easily? Vivek looked at the Hortator for a long time. Nerevar understood. Do not betray your nature. Answer as you will. Vivek said I brought you here because I knew the mightiest of my issue would succumb to Muatra without argument. If only I gave him consolation first. Nerevar looked at Vivek for a long time. Vivek understood. Say the words, Hortator. Nerevar said, now I am the mightiest of your children. Let this sermon be consolation to those who read it that are destined to die. The ending of the words is Alm City. So I realized something that I missed talking about. Um, in sermon 33 about Lyrock, uh, the second aperture is mentioned. This may or may not be Vivek's anus. Um, Vivek is a hermaphrodite and so likely has male and female genitals. And so presumably would have a vagina with which to give birth with. Um, it's a very odd one to talk about, and that's saying something considering this. Oh, interesting. The uh, but yeah, it may be implied that Lie Rock was birthed, was born of Vivek's second aperture. Yeah, it says here, Lie Rock was born of Vivek's separate, second aperture. Um, yes, Lie Rock may, in fact, be uh, born out of Vivek's anus. Gosh, excuse me. Apologies, my alarm went off. I've uh, stayed up through the night, you see. Anyway. Assuming that Vivek's possible vagina is the first aperture, the second one would be his anus, likely. And uh, that would be how he gave birth to Lyrock. It's mentioned explicitly Lyrock was born of Vivek's second aperture. Yes, what is it? Anyway, on to Sermon 34. He left the min Ministry of Truth, and he was looking for the last one. Um, Vivek calls Nerevar to him. Nerevar has a vision of that cool amulet from Oblivion. Um, and what's more, he has a vision of Talos, the two-headed ruling king. Um, Nerevar finally gets pissed at Vivek and asks why he's always so evasive. Vivek says to the Hortator that that is his nature. Um, it is unclear what Vivek means like this, by this. His nature is his choice, truly, as is anyone's. But Vivek wants to be a mysterious and strange person and so is always evasive. Um, this is the life Vivek has chosen for himself. So, on the topic, the final monster is also confused at why he has to die just because he was a, you know, bad creation. Vivek says a little prayer for him and says that it's also in his nature. Vivek almost seems chained and bound by his nature here. He has to do these things whether or not he wants to because it is his nature. Nerevar again has his axe here. Um, and Vivek explains that as long as he talked to the last one, 
he would have come quietly, and he did. And he wanted Nerevar to see this. Nerevar is then prompted by Vivek to say something, and Nerevar says, Now I am the mightiest of your children. Nerevar considers himself a child of Vivek, not through birth or genetics, but because Vivek more or less has now raised him. Even though Vivek was born after Nerevar, and Nerevar, in fact, carried and kept uh, Vivek's egg safe, the wisdom that Vivek has given to Nerevar has molded Nerevar into this thing that fights alongside the stars and constellations and battles gods. And so one could consider Vivek somebody who raised Nerevar in a sense. Sermon 35. The Scripture of Love. The formula of proper Velothi magic continues in ancient traditions, but that virility is dead, by which I mean at least replaced. Truth owes its medicinal nature to the establishment of the myth of justice. Its curative properties it likewise owes to the concept of sacrifice. Princes, chiefs, and angels all subscribe to the same notion. This is a view primarily based on a prolific abolition of an implied profanity seen in ceremonies, knife-finding, hunting, and the exploration of the poetic. On the ritual of occasions which comes to us from the days of the cave glow, I can say nothing more than to loosen your equation by moods to lunar ceremony. Later, and by that I mean much, much later, my reign will be seen as an act of the highest love, which is a return from the astral destiny and the marriages between. By that I mean the catastrophes, which will come from all five planets. Subsequent are the revisions differentiated between hope and the distraught, situations that are only required by the periodic death of the immutable. Cosmic time is repeated. I wrote this in an earlier life, an imitation of the submersions of a submersion is love premonition. It's folly into the underworld, by which I mean the day you read about outside of yourself in an age of gold. For on that day, which is a shadow of the sacrificial concept, all of history is obliged to see me for what you are, in love with evil. To keep one's powers intact at such a stage is to allow for the existence of what can only be called a continual spirit. Make of your love a defense against the horizon. Your existence is only granted to the holy which comes in a myriad of forms, half them frightening, and the other half divided into equal parts, purposeless and assured. Late is the lover that comes to this by any other walking way than the female, which is the number and the limit of the world. The lover is the highest country in a series of beliefs. He is the sacred city bereft of a double. The uncultivated land of monsters is the world. This is clearly attested by Anu and his double, which love knows never really happened. Similar, all of the other symbols of absolute reality are ancient ideas ready for their graves, or at least the essence of such. The scripture is directly ordered by codes of my father, the origin of sex and murder, defeated only by those who take up those ideas without my intervention. The religious elite is not a tendency or correlation. They are dogma complemented by the influence of the untrustworthy sea and the governance of the stars, dominated at the center of the world, which is nothing without a victim to cleave unto. This is the love of God, and he would show you more. Predatory, but at the same time instrumental to the will of a critical harvest. A scenario by which one becomes as he is, of male and female, the magic hermaphrodite. Mark the norms of violence, and it barely and registers, time, suspended as it is by treaties written by the original spirits. This should be seen as an opportunity, and in no way tedious. Though some will give it up, give up for it is easier to kiss the lover than to become one. The lower regions crawl with these souls, you caves of shower treasures meeting in places to testify by way of extension when love is only satisfied by a considerable and calculable effort. The ending of the words is Alm Sivi. <sighs> Sermon 35 is one long block of text, whereas the other scriptures of blank are normally just about um, symbolic musings on a thing, object, or way of thought. This is one long block of text that is not a list, and as such is very hard to grasp. But Vivek is using love as a tool here. He gets things done with it. <sighs> Alright. Last one. 
Sermon 36. For these were the days of Rizdania, when the Chimer and Dwemer lived under the wise and benevolent rule of the Almsivi and their champion the Hortator, though the Dwemer had become foolish and challenged their masters. Out of their fortress they came with golden ballista they walked, and mighty Atronachs and things that spat flame and made killing songs. Their king was Dumak Dwarf Orc, but their high priest was Kaganrak the Blighter. Under mountains and over them, the war with the Dwemer was raged, and the northern men came to help Kaganrak, and they brought Ismir again. Leading the armies of the Chimer was the slave that would not perish, the Hortator Nereverine, who has traded his axe for the Ethos knife. He slew Dumak at Red Mountain and saw the heart bone for the first time. Men of brass destroyed the eleven gates of the Morning Hold, and behind them came the Dwemeri architects of Tone. I am threw down her cloak and became the face-snaked queen of the three-in-one. Those who looked upon her were overcome by the meeting of the stars. Under the sea, Vivek set, rather, stirred and brought back the army he had been working on in castles of glass and coral. Clockwork Druz, mockery of the Dwemeri war machines, rose up from the seas and took their counterparts back beneath where they were swallowed by the sea. Red Mountain exploded as the Hortator went too far inside, seeking the Sharmat. Dwemeri High Priest Kaganrak then revealed he had built in the image the of the back. It was a walking star which burnt the armies of the Triune and destroyed the heartland of Veloth, creating the Inner Sea. Each of the aspects of the Almsivi rose up together, combining as one, and showed the world the sixth path. I am took a star from its fire, Set took its mystery, and Vec took its feet, which had been constructed before the gift of Molag Ball and destroyed in the manner of truth by a great hammering. When the soul of the Dwemer could walk no more, they were removed from this world. I can do for you? Resdania was no more. It had been redeemed of all the iniquities of the foolish. The Almsivi drew nets from the beginning place and captured the ash of the Red Mountain, which they knew was the blight of the Dwemer, and would only serve to infect the whole of Middle-world and aid it. Alta Dun Dunmeri. The beginning of the words do is Almsivi. I, I give you this as Vivek. I'm listening. It's rather fitting that the last book is about the last book as Vivek himself. Any time now. Go ahead. Sarah. The last book Vivek wrote, rather, is in actuality um the only book where Vivek should become a god because he becomes a god in after this war is fought. The Nords align with the Dwemer. But the Chimer had their Argonian slaves to help I was well, I believe. Uh, they brought Ysmir down to help. Nerevor has exchanged his axe for the Ethos knife, but the Ethos knife is actually Keening, which is still in the hand of Kaganrak. As Kaganrak... As Kaganrak's tools... are I'm things listening. built and held by Kaganrak, and Keening is one of those three. So it should be impossible that it's he could so have that, good. but whatever. Um, Nerevar killing Dumak at Red Mountain may or may not be canon. Oh, right, um, Dumak and Nerevar were friends prior to this war. What's this about? And in fact, Dumak was at Nerevar's wedding and gifted him an Amalexia Magic Swords. The Walking Star is again another use of star as a way of meeting God. And what's more, the star that the Sharmat claims to bring. What I bring is light, what I bring is a star, I am older than music. The refers to the Numidium, the giant brass robot that will become a god that the Dwemer built. What is this about? Um, but yes, it is a great, great war between the two of them. The weakness of... The weakness of the Dwemer is what is blamed for... their disappearance, that they were too weak to handle the world. And another thing... Um, Vivek claims that Kaganrak built Numidium based off of Vivek himself. 
which is rather egotistical. And those are the 36 lessons of Vivek. However, there is a secret 37th sermon um, located in the Elder Scrolls Online in the Morrowind chapter. Um, and it takes place long after the other 36 lessons. You have discovered the, the 37th ser Sermon of Vivek, May which I is know? a bending of the light, long past the chronicles of the Hortator, who wore inconsistent faces and ruled however they would until Apocalypse. Vivek was born by ribbons of water, which wrote their star word couplings in red. This was a new place of speed. His eyes broke on the spikes above the tower where the void ghost squatted over a drake-scaled drum, imbecile in its rhythm. And he asked of it, who are you that need no signature at all? I see this Three in sum, the robes of I am stretched towards the black, bright rim of memory, roping an arc of purchase. This was a new spinning task, and Set held his swollen belly to its name, Clockmaker's Daughter, swimming the dead confession along a century of thread, naming her uneaten a golden cache of Velos and Velofi, for where else would they go? Go here, world without wheel, charting zero deaths, and echo sin. Set said, until all of it was done and the center was And the red moment became a great howling unchecked, for the provisional house was in ruins. And Vivek became as glass, a lamp for the dragon's main throat. And the red moon bathed in stone. The sign of royalty is not this. I see no blue ship feeling. There is no right less of life. He refused the twine on her captain. Spiteful and uncontinued people who must become full of life. And yet were racked in their spirits for flight. But the male signals were offended, and Vivek took a fighting form. He undid his eastern light, saying the alms of that through war they had become brides in glass, which no power could observe. The light bent, and Vivek donned a cuirass made of red plates of jewel, and a mask that marked him born of the lands of man. Wheeling, he spread into an insect sow, born on the neck of his gold to my challenge. He roared up and fed his fingers to mammoth ghosts. The signal fires one of they mistook for this for surrender. For Vivek had told the Void that he could learn to undo it all. The light bent and somewhere a history is finally undone. Of it, Vivek remembered the laughing of the netchmen of his village when the hunts were good. He marched with his father in the ash, growing strong in the hooks and sail, able to run and junk through silt. At eleven, he Your sung to an ash can, an he became ant. sick after Red Mountain, the next part of the and was infirmed a hundred years. His mother survived him and laid his body at the altar of Padome. She gave him her skin to wear into the underworld. The light bent, and Vivek awoke and grew fangs, unwilling to make of herself a folding thing. This was a new and lunar promise, and in her biting she tunneled up and then downward, while her brother and sister smeared across heaven, thin ruptures of descent, food for scarabs and the worm. She took her people and made them safe, and sat with Azura, drawing her own husband's likeness in the dirt. For I have removed my left hand and my right, he will say, for that is how I shall win against them. Love alone, and you shall only know mistakes of salt. The wording of the worlds is amaranth. So, this is primarily a reference to Coda. Coda is a graphic novel Michael Kirkbride, the author of Most of Oblivion, wrote. And it is essentially a sequel to Morrowind, um, but just Morrowind, several thousand years in the future. Um, the Numidium activated and took over the world, destroyed the Ultimer, and made the world unlivable. And a bunch of Kaijit, Argonians, and Dunmer have started a colony on the moon, which is where most of life exists. The main character, Jubal, I believe his name is, at one point cuts his hands off so he can... He actually has his hands operated on and surgically removed so he can use something called ghost hands, which is a way of activating Chim. Um... World Without Wheel, Charting Zero Deaths, and Echo Singing is www.coda.es. Charting Zero Deaths and is C0DA, the way that Coda is written. .es is the site of it, and it's on the World Wide Web. World Without Wheel, however, is also a reference to the world as a wheel. Um as mentioned in the other ones, but because Coda is not a video game, like most of the things about Arbus, it does not have the wheel, arguably. 
Go ahead, Outlander. What do you need? Um. And also, Vivek claims to have removed his left hand and his right. Or rather, he says, he claims that somebody will someday say that. Uh, which is what happens in Coda. What do you yes, want? this is somehow after and before a lot of other things. But yes, that is... That is the 36 Lessons of Vivek. Um, thank you all for coming. Sorry for the interruption, although I guess you wouldn't notice it that much. Um, it was a lot of work to read this, and you can probably hear that my voice is going out in a big way, but thank you all for coming. I have been Alfred at short for El Friedrich. I know the syllable of rule, and I am a true ruling king. I am the true dreamer. I am the Nereverine, and I have brought a star. Thank you for coming. I hope you have a nice day. Uh, by all means, please watch more of my ASMR videos or more of my Morrowind videos. I have a great deal of them. And all through my Morrowind Three LPs, I discuss a great deal of the lore with it. Um, but yes. Thank you. Have a good day. I'll see you later. Bye.